This Seed Starting Moment series is about the whys and some of the hows of my seed starting story. The number one tip that you're going to hear throughout this whole series is keep it simple and stay out of the rabbit holes. Whether you dream of being a flower farmer or you just want to grow flowers for your kitchen table, I'm Lisa Mason Ziegler. I'm glad you're here. Let's jump in. Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Starting Moment. This is number six. When do you move them outside and harden them off? And what's that all about? All right, so what hardening off means is taking your tender babies that have been growing inside in a really controlled, um, safe little haven and moving them outside. Um, I think one of the things that I totally underestimated when I first started seed starting is how much even a little bit of wind can be really detrimental to your seedlings when they're not used to any wind. You know, they're used to sitting in the room um, fat and happy, right? You know, giving them everything they need. So the hardening, that's what that process is called of getting them outdoors um, and acclimated to the outdoor environment. And I will tell you that I cheat really big on this. I feel like, and I'm not a good puppy raiser either, y'all. I don't like tedious little jobs right? It's like I am a do it and move on to the next thing. So I took great pains of creating an area outdoors on my farm here that I can move my seedlings outdoors and leave them, that I don't have to do what so many people do two hours out today, four hours out tomorrow. I mean, that's just not a possibility with as busy as my day is here on the farm. So I have created an area. It's under a carport. Um, Soil blocks, you don't want them out in um, direct sun, perhaps immediately. But more importantly, you don't want them to have downpours of rain because it'll just, it'll, you know, damage your blocks. So I created an area under a carport. So they are protected from the high sun of the day and downpours, but yet they get the southeast morning sun for several hours. And then when the sun moves over, they get a blast of the hot afternoon. And then also around that carport, I have a low fence that blocks the majority of the wind. And I have my um, trays up on a little raised table. It's actually bulb crates that are built into tables, Um, but they're up off the ground so I can reach them easily. When I move my plants from inside my grow room to outside onto this carport, Almost always they're out to stay unless we have some crazy weather event with high wind, you know, a storm kind of situation coming. And so when do I move them out into that environment? I am looking. So when we have warm season tender annuals, heat is far harder on plants than cold is on cool season plants. So for warm season, tender annuals, I'm always looking for at least seven to 10 days of hardening off before they get planted out in the garden. That time between the grow room and going to the garden is about a week to 10 days outside in that growing area, in the um, carport area. Cool season hardy annuals does not have to necessarily be that long because so often, um, because cool is just not detrimental to them. They're not afraid of cool. Hot is what really exhausts and overheats plants. So a few less days for cool season. So I'm looking for that three to five inch size to plant in the garden. So once our seed starting freight train starts here on this farm, typically plants get moved out onto the carport literally when there's more plants coming off the heat mat that they need space under the grow lights. So I have moved plants out onto the carport anywhere when they're two inches or so high, knowing they're gonna finish off out there on the carport. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger. So three to five is my target for the garden. Um, And it really, I say that because I think I can grow as transplant quicker than another person with a different type of environment. So that's why I tell you size and not weeks. So that's about how long. Now, this is one of the tricks that um, I follow here on our farm. We do pinch plants occasionally. We don't always do it. I do it when it's convenient for me. And this is when it may turn out to be convenient for you. 
we pinch in the trays for soil blocked plants. Um, we find that they rebound beautifully. I have not done this in plug trays, so I can't comment on that. But this is where I learned how to pinch soil blocks is my plants were sitting out on the carport. They were starting to get to the top of that five inches and we had two weeks of rain forecasted and there was no way I was going to get those plants out in the garden, right? And as a last minute, desperate, ditched effort, you know, the Hail Mary I was throwing is I thought, well, we might as well pinch these plants in the trays because they're only going to get worse sitting here like this. And that's where I learned that pinching in the tray does amazing stuff. I'm not going to talk about pinching here because there are good pros and cons both ways. But when your plants are hardening off, if you can't get to planting them for whatever reason, and they're starting to get ugly, it's time to pinch them. Because when we pinch, we do not want to plant them after the pinch until they show signs that they've recovered. And that is little sprouts. And that usually takes about a week. So usually pinching in the tray can buy you another seven to 14 days. And it grows an amazing transplant when you actually do that. So that hardening off stage, we kick them out of the grow room to the carport when they're anywhere from two inches up. Our goal is to get them into the garden when they're three to five inches. And this is a great time um, if you need a Hail Mary, if you can't plant them and they're getting bigger, to pinch them when they're in that hardening off stage, but allow them to recover before you plant them out in the garden. So friends, if you want to learn more about soil blocking, if you need soil blocking equipment, seed starting equipment, um, and just more, you want to learn more about us, head on over to the Gardener's Workshop dot com and we'll hook you up. Ciao.